Hi, this is Mr. Bernard and welcome to my series on calculating and cutting stairs. Today I'm going to talk about calculating the stairwell opening. The stairwell opening calculation is really critical. If you get it wrong, your opening could be too big, which means you'd be wasting floor area on your upper floor. And if you get it too small, your stairs won't pass the final inspection and you won't get your occup occupancy permit. The rough stairwell opening actually starts somewhere behind the nosing. Somewhere in here there's some framing. And it ends over here. This is the spot right here where you'd hit your head if the stairwell opening was too small. So what we're trying to calculate is the distance from the framing behind this wall finish to the framing behind this riser board here. During the final inspection, after all the finishes have been applied, the building inspector will come and measure down from this spot here, plumb, down to the nosing line. Remember the nosing line goes from nosing to nosing in a straight line. So they're not going to measure to the tread, they're going to measure on a line that goes from nosing to nosing. Okay, this is what the stairwell opening looks like as a picture. So you'll note that I've got the stairs and I've drawn a big triangle that uh, represents the stairwell rough opening and it starts from framing and goes to framing. That's why the hypotenuse line right here is going through the nosing. And I've also shaded in one of the stairs. So that's a small triangle that's made up of the rise, the run, and the unit of bridge. The headroom requirement is the distance from the nosing line, which is the dash line, to the finished ceiling up above. So from that drawing you should have noticed that we're dealing with two triangles, a big triangle and a little triangle. The big triangle's got three sides, like all triangles. The top of that triangle is the opening that we're trying to find, or the distance we're trying to find. The rise of that triangle is the distance from the nosing line to the top of the floor and the hypotenuse of course is running through the nosing line. The small triangle is the stair itself. It's made up of the rise of the stair, the run of the stair, and the unit of bridge. Now for this calculation the unit of bridge and the hypotenuse of the big triangle aren't important. We're just trying to find the run of the big triangle. So to do that we're going to use similar triangles. Similar triangles are any two or three triangles, it doesn't actually matter how many you have, if all of the angles in each of those triangles is equal, then they're all similar triangles regardless of how big they are. So here I have a picture of two similar triangles. One of them measures three on the rise, four on the run, and five on the hypotenuse. The big one measures nine on the rise. We don't know the run of the hypotenuse, but we do know that they're both right angle triangles because that's been indicated and we also know that the, uh, the smaller angle, angle A, is equal in both of them because they have the same name. Therefore these are definitely similar triangles. Because they're similar, we can use the information on the small triangle to calculate the sizes on the big triangle and the reason for that is because the relationship between the sizes on the small triangle stays constant when you look at the big triangle. Therefore, if I can figure out how much bigger the rise is, I can, figure, I can use that, that uh, multiplier and use it on the run and the hypotenuse. In this case, the rise is three times bigger on the rise of the big triangle than it is on the small triangle. Therefore, the run is three times bigger. So the run of this one is three times four is 12. And the hypotenuse is also three times bigger. So the hypotenuse is 5 times 3, which is 15. Now this is a pretty easy one. What happens if you get numbers that aren't so obvious? So I, here I have two triangles and the relationship is not so obvious. How many times does 3 go into 11? So what we're going to do is we're going to use two fractions, ratio and proportion, and we're going to use a little bit of basic algebra to figure out how long the run is on the bigger triangle. 
What I like to do is I like to start by putting the unknown on the top of one of the fractions. It doesn't matter which one. I'm going to stick it over here. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the other number on that triangle, in this case 11, I'm going to put it on the bottom. For the small triangle, I'm just going to duplicate the pattern that I used on the big triangle. On the big triangle, the run was on the bottom, so for the small one, I'm going to put the run, I'm sorry, the run was on the top, so I'm going to put the run on the top. And the rise went on the bottom, so I put the rise on the bottom. And now I solve for the variable, which in this case is run. The way I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply both sides by 11. And on this side, the 11 cancels out. And I'm left with, I'm left with run equals 11 times 4 divided by 3. or run equals 44 over 3. So I can calculate that. I'll just get my phone. 44 divided by 3, according to my phone, is 14.6 repeated. Which is 14 and 2 thirds. Okay, now I'd like to go back and take a look at the drawing of a set of stairs. So the rise and run of the stair itself is pretty obvious. The rise of the big triangle is a little less so. The rise is actually made up of two numbers. The big number is the headroom requirement. You'll find that in the building code. The other number is the thickness of the floor frame. Now the thickness of the floor frame is made up of whatever is going to constitute the floor framing after it's been finished. So that includes exterior finish on the bottom of the floor, the header of the floor, that's this stuff right here, and your finished flooring. Now I've only drawn, drawn one layer, but typically you'll have a subfloor and then some sort of finished floor over top of that. So this 10.5 inches is just an example. It's not super um, realistic because this is not how things are done most of the time today, but it'll do for an example. The other thing I'd like to draw your attention to is that we've got a finished opening. That's the distance from the nosing on the stair to whatever's happening on the other side. And we've got a rough opening. The rough opening is the distance from the framing on either side. It's the rough opening we're interested in. You'll also note that the finished opening is smaller than the rough opening. For that reason, when we calculate the finished opening using similar triangles, you're going to need to remember to add 75 millimeters or 3 inches to your finished opening to get a number for your rough opening. Most common mistake with this calculation is to forget this final step. Okay, so here are the building code requirements. So, building code in BC says that private stairs have to have a headroom clearance of 1,950 millimeters. Public stairs have to have 2,050 millimeters. These are numbers that are worth memorizing. Sometimes you're building an imperial. My floor frame thickness was an imperial. So, sometimes you're going to have to use these numbers in imperial. To convert from the metric to the imperial, you need to remember that there are 25.4 millimeters in one inch. If I have 1,950 millimeters, I take that number and divide it by 25.4 to get the equivalent in imperial. And that is 77 inches. I've actually rounded that up. My calculator says 76.77, but I've rounded it up because you don't want the opening too small. And then 2050, I can just add 4 inches to that because 100 millimeters is about 4 inches. So I have 77 and 81 inches. Okay, so let's do this problem right here. 
with these dimensions for our floor frame. So let's pretend these are private stairs. That means the headroom requirement is 1,950 millimeters. I'm going to do this one in metric. And here's my floor frame and it says that 10.5 inches is equivalent to 267 millimeters. If you add 267 to 1,950, you get 2,217. So now I have my two triangles. I got my stair and I just picked typical stairs, 175 for the unit rise and 250 for the unit run. And I'm trying to find the stairwell finished opening. So to do that, remember I draw four lines and I'm going to put the unknown up there. I'm going to put the rise there. And then this is the run, so 250 goes on the top. And 175 goes on the bottom. And now I'm going to isolate the variable by multiplying both sides by 2,217. And remember when I do that to this side, they cancel each other out. So my finished opening is 2,217 times 250 divided by 175. So here we are on my calculator. So 2217 times 250 divided by 175 equals 3,000. 167.14 and I always say round up when you get numbers like this because you don't want your stairwell opening too small. So the finished opening is equal to 3168. The rough opening is equal to that plus 75. 3168 plus 75 that's three, two, three, three. So, for this example, I would frame from header to header 3,233 millimeters, or 3.233 meters. Okay, one more example. So I'll do the same setup, but this time I've added a subfloor and my finished floor. So the distance from the top of the finished floor to the bottom of the ceiling finish is 11 and a quarter inches. So I want to figure out what my finished opening is and then I need to remember to add three inches at the end. I'm also going to do this one as if it was a public stair. A public stair has a headroom requirement of 2,050 millimeters which in Imperial is 81 inches. 11.25 plus 81 equals 92.25. So there's the rise of the big triangle. My stairs this time are 7.16 inches, that was calculated, and my unit run is 10 inches. So I'm now just going to put those numbers into my setup here. I'm going to put the finished opening on the top, 92. 2.5 on the bottom and then over here remember I have got the run on the top here so I need to put the run on the top here 10 and 7.16 then I'm going to multiply both sides by 92 and a quarter that will cancel out And then I punch those numbers into my calculator. Okay, so here's my calculator. I got 92 and a quarter times 10 divided by 7.16. So 92.25 times 10 divided by 7.16. It's 128. 0.84. So I'm just going to round that to 129 inches. Remember I have to add 3 inches to get my 
There's my finished opening. I have to add three inches to get my rough opening. 129 plus 3 and that equals 132 inches. So there you have calculating the rough stairwell opening in both metric and imperial. The key to all this is understanding similar triangles. As a bonus, in carpentry, similar triangles get used all the time. Roofs, quite often, are just triangles. And calculating how long a rafter is on a roof for both common rafters and hip rafters and all that also requires a basic understanding of similar triangles. You can solve all kinds of carpentry problems with this basic math tool in your toolbox. So I hope it helps. Thanks.